Um, well, thank you for coming and listening to what I'm about to say. Um, thanks for the opportunity to share some experience that we collected in the last five and a half years. Most of you might have heard about the Heidegger Fund. There's a few uh, portfolio companies uh, here at the conference, uh, five actually. And I'm just uh, briefly share what we do, what we have done, what we have learned from what we've done. And I'll share, it's a bit risky what the, towards the end, I'll share our five biggest successes. That's what everybody does. But I also share the five biggest mistakes that we did. And uh, no, it's, they're really mistakes. Uh, <laughs> and um, well, this is not this is not <laughs> how it should look like. Well, this is the first mistake. The presentation <laughs> it looks very different from. Uh, <clears throat> well, anyway, what, what do we do? Um, if you look at the High Tech Greener Fund, it's a huge fund, two hundred seventy-two million euros, and it was started in late two thousand five, and the origin was uh, actually a a group of civil servants in, in the Department of Economics uh, under Chancellor Schroeder, they, they recognized, well, Germany, after the birth of the bubble, there was no seed financing for high-tech companies. All the investors went to the later stages, and a figure that's not on the slide is 16. 16 companies in 2004 were seed financed um, by members of the German Venture Capital Association. And 16, that's happening around Cambridge, that's happening in, in Finland, and it's a very, very small number. And uh, you know, there was a group assembled of um, um, uh, civil servants from the Department of Economics, from public, but also from private investors, from uh, uh, large companies. And they sat together and thought about, well, what should we, should we do about it? And the result of what they thought was, well, let's set up a fund who addresses exactly that problem. And that's us. That's the High Tech Runner Fund. It's huge. Most of the money comes from the government, 240 million from the government, 15 from the KFW, government-owned bank, and 17 million from these uh, six private companies. Um, we structured like a regular uh, investment fund with a limited investment period and a limited de-investment period. Um, we, um, we invest equity, typically half a million in the first shot, and we can invest up to two million uh, per company. And that makes us a very small player, because two million, especially in the clean tech space, is not a lot of money. Uh, most of our companies lead definitely more than half a million, and most of them need more than two million. So that, that's an important uh, aspect of how we are set up. Uh, that forces us uh, to, to pull in other investors that f for them to follow on our investment. That's a very key component. Uh, it was a very big risk when we were started, because we knew we had to find other investors. and as they had moved away from the early phases, the key question was, could we pull them back in a little bit? So, um, but we are, we're not only giving money, we also, uh, it's a very important aspect of what we do, we also provide value. Because we understand, especially with young companies, when they're set up, typically uh, they have uh, limited uh, work experience, usually they don't have any experience setting up companies, so they, they might be leading experts in their technology field, but they still need a lot of support setting up the companies. So there's two pillars um, where we show the support. Um, one of them is a network of coaches. Um, these are around 80 um, consultants, business angels, small seed funds all over Germany who, who do three things. They help us, they help the companies um, uh, uh, path the way to the Heide Gründer Fund. They support the companies in what we call the acquisition phase. Uh, they help them developing, writing the business plan, developing the financial model, uh, maybe doing the presentation, uh, practicing the presentation, the investor presentation. So they really provide strong support um, you know, on the way to the investor. And then once we have made the investment, they do more operational things. They help set up the reporting system, the financial controlling system, Maybe they help recruiting. Maybe if they have a sales focus, they help uh, present preparing the, the sales pitches, uh, whatever is needed. These coaches are being paid by our portfolio companies. Um, you know, we set up a, a framework uh, to make sure that um, the company doesn't spend too much uh, on outside uh, consultants. But it's important if they if they generate value, then of course they they um, they can get some money for it. What we prefer that they don't take money out of the companies. Uh, what we really prefer is uh, if they co-invest along with us, they could uh, swap their, 
their fee into equity, and that changes their perspective maybe a little bit into a longer-term perspective. So these coaches are a very valuable asset, and they're in, in many, many cases, they really significantly helped our portfolio companies um, doing well. Then, of course, what we do, we support uh, follow-on uh, acquisition of follow-on investments. Um, up, up until last year, we were limited to one million total investment per company, and that was bumped up a little bit. Um, so uh, there was a very pressing need. Uh, we help these companies set up their management team or, or uh, recruit other key members. That's a very important aspect of our work. We help them focus in many cases, especially with a broad technology. Uh, the entrepreneurs say, well, I can do five things, and I'll do five things. If, because if one thing doesn't work, then I'll have four other things that might work. What we've learned um, is you, know, you need to focus because if you do five things at the same time, nothing works. Uh, Cost-cutting was a very important aspect in 2009, and of course always is. And we have a huge uh, pool, information pool, out of our portfolio. We do benchmarking, systematic benchmarking. We look at sales cycles in our portfolio company and reflect them with other companies. We look at cost structures. You know, if two companies do similar things, one company has a 30% higher cost structure, we actively ask them, well, what do you think about maybe reducing your cost structure? You know, that helps being more successful. And we cultivate a huge network. So that's what we do. It's really important for you to take away. It's not only money that we provide. It's also added value. Uh, and uh, we can show some successes um, adding the value. Ah, this, this is repaired. Uh, what are the results and what have we learned doing what we've done for five and a half years? And if you look at the results, they're, um, they're, we're a little bit proud on some of them. We have made 230 investments in, um, in five and a half years, and that comes down to between 40 and 50 investments uh, per year. And that's really one of the main goals that we have, filling the gap that existed by finding good companies. And, uh, of course, the key challenge really is and was to find really good companies. It's not spray and pray. It's not uh, giving the money away and then uh, being happy that the money is gone. Uh, it's really, our, our challenge really was and is uh, finding good companies. And what makes it a bit more difficult, we are always leading the rounds. We're not co-investing because there's no one to co-invest with. Uh, we are usually, in 95% of all cases, we let the investment rounds, and in most cases, we are the only investor. So that makes it uh, a bit more difficult, but makes it uh, much more fun and challenging. So what comes after that? So we invest in all these companies, and the key question was, well, will there be any follow-on financing? And the clear answer I can give is yes. We raised 301 million euros follow-on investments into that portfolio by other investors in next rounds. Uh, in, and we closed 212 follow-on rounds. Uh, it's not 212 companies, because some companies have more than one round, follow-on round. But the, 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 the sheer figure, 300 million euros follow-on investments, shows that we were successful bridging the seed gap. You know, we started the companies, we helped them develop, and then we were successful acquiring follow-on investment. And what's interesting about the structure of these 300 million is um, um, actually two-thirds of it is, or actually 70% of it is, 72% um, of it is private money. So, um, so we started with public money, and then in, uh, as soon as the next rounds, we handed it over to private investors, which we find is a good quality indicator. We sold 12 companies, eight, eight profitable exits, and we lost 28 companies, um, which is, of course, a high number, 28. But in terms of, you know, if you reflect that um, with a portfolio, we're quite happy that the failure rate is, is still low. It, it, it will grow, uh, um, but, but we, are, we, we are very confident and optimistic that uh, a good half of our portfolio will be successful. Um, the second point that I mentioned where we provide value, we uh, placed more than 85 managing directors into our portfolio companies, uh, usually uh, complementing the, the existing founder team. In some cases, excha exchanging founders. Uh, in a very few cases, exchanging the complete founder team, which was very, very difficult. And um, and um, in, in more than 90% of the cases, the placements that we initiated were successful. Uh, a third we did ourselves, two-thirds were done by uh, headhunters that we you know, work with. Um, 
we believe the German market uh, is the German uh, startup market, venture capital market is is growing, is is prospering not only because of us, of course, but because of many things. And uh, you know, talking to investors that are here, I think the German startup market presents a very unique chance to make very good investments because prices are still very low, and there's a very strong technology and entrepreneur base. Uh, we're open for partnerships. We created 90 paper millionaires. We're just about to create our first real millionaire uh, with the company that we sold. There's an earnout scheme attached to it earlier this year. And if that works, then there will be the first millionaire. And uh, we have a very highly motivated team, uh, which, is, you know, which makes all the fun. What are the key learnings? Well, one of the, the most important key learning, if, if you're on a wrong start, it's very hard to correct. So, um, you know, in, in the earlier years, we said, well, let's, Let's try it out, let's uh, it's, uh, give some money, let's put a hard milestone, and then let's make corrections later. And we learned it's possible, but it's much harder than if we were make the corrections uh, much earlier. So, um, so uh, you know, we try to put the company on the, on the right track even before we close the investment. That saves a lot of work um, later on. Um, <coughs> no portfolio company, no. Uh, pass the 1 million revenue mark in the year after the investment, except for three, and th these are really exceptions. But uh, about 30 of our business plans that we see show that they will have wo 1 million or more revenue in the year following the investment, and no company has made it. So the exceptions, exceptions are three, <laughs> two e-commerce companies, which is easy in e-commerce, and one company which was a spin-off that came with more than 1 million revenue. So that's an interesting learning. If you see a business plan it and, and the company, the founders tell us, well, I make 1.4 million revenue next year, we uh, attach a very low probability to, to that. And you know, we, don't, we, <laughs> we don't block the founders. Maybe there will be a company doing that uh, sometime. But uh, um, we, uh, we recalculate the plan with a different uh, revenue figure, and that shows a different, uh, different financing need. Key learning that we have and there's three, 230 basis points. The seed gap can be bridged successfully. I think that's what I said with the follow-on financing. Uh, that's a, should be also a motivation for companies, for founders to set, start their company. You will be able to acquire follow-on financing if you don't make really bad mistakes. And for the investors, come on and invest earlier. It's, it's not as bad as you think. Um, management is the main reason for failure. We looked at the 28 companies that failed and uh, in more than half of these cases, we, we think that there were very, very bad mistakes by the management, spending too much money, uh, fighting, which is a very bad thing, uh, and doing other things. So, so from that, really, the key, key bottleneck is, is, is value add and, and good people. Uh, that's what we learned. And uh, to support that, um, so far, it was twice as likely to fail with an investment offer on the table than uh, not finding any investment. We had five companies that failed, and there was an investment offer on the table, and they failed because they, they fought with themselves or with the investors or acted irrationally. And we had three companies where we were not, where we were not capable of finding follow-on financing. So, so that really shows the bottleneck. It's not so much financing if you don't make any bad mistakes, if you don't fight with each other or, or the investors, then there's good chances to, um, to, get, to get money. So what are our, our biggest successes, our biggest mistakes? Uh, very briefly, biggest success, we raised 19 million financing round for Heliatech, organic photovoltaic company, in the fall of 2009. So if you think back, 2009, world was going under, financial meltdown, and we were capable of raising a 19 million round. It was one of the largest rounds in 2009. And uh, we seeded the company with half a million, knowing that they would need 100 million follow-on financing. And we did a, an A round with two of our investors, Bosch and BSF and Wellington, in uh, 2007. And then the 19 million round it was a combination of financial and strategic investors. Yeah, that, I think, was a very big success. Well, the 300 million, uh, we think, is a very big success. Follow-on financing in the portfolio. I mentioned earlier, um, what else do we have? There should be more. <laughs> okay, there it is. Well, we sold a stake, a uh, small stake, 
Actually, it was half of our investment, 175,000 we invested, sold half of our investment for 1.4 million in 2008. That was the highest multiple that we uh, achieved so far, 8.9 or so. Um, and 2008, three years after we started, so we're very happy about that. Um, in terms of, did that pay the fund back? <laughs> no, <laughs> didn't. Uh, we're happy with small, small figures. Um, yeah, we, we believe we filled the seed gap with, make, with closing 230 investments. Uh, and we really believe there's a significant impact in the German um, startup and venture capital market just by the sheer number of um, mostly very good companies that we, that we found. And, uh, well, a success, I think, um, that, that we achieved, we built a great team. We have 22 investment managers, and uh, we spent a lot of time recruiting these. It was very difficult. And we had the unique opportunity to, to start from scratch and, and build a team. And uh, if you ever meet someone from the High Tech Grunder Fund, you know, make sure you get to know them. They're really great people. Uh, now, um, a bit difficult part of my presentation, the biggest mistakes. <laughs> it's really embarrassing, <laughs> because they're really mistakes. And one of the biggest mistakes that uh, investors do, and we did that too, and I stopped doing that, is yelling. If it doesn't work well, if there's a crisis, if the, if the founders lie to you, if they take money off the companies, it does not help to yell. We learned that, and it's a, it's a mistake because it doesn't help. It makes things worse. So, uh, and we actually, we lost the company uh, just uh, at the end of last year uh, because of other investors yelling at the founders. We didn't do it because we learned it. <laughs> and uh, the, the result was the companies filed for, the, the founders filed for bankruptcy. There was 50,000 euros on the bank, no debt. And, and the founders said, well, we don't want it anymore. And they filed for bankruptcy. And the insolvency guy, he said, he doesn't understand it. The company should work. And they, they just gave up because of yelling. So I think it really is a mistake. We did that too. And maybe we still do it, but I have learned it's a mistake. Um, the second mistake, really, and I did that. We financed a, a mobile messaging company. You know, it was really cool, uh, mobile messaging for smartphones, pre-iPhone, uh, 2006, 2007. And then I saw one of the founders coming out of a bar in Hamburg, and I was entering the bar at 1 o'clock at night. He was coming out of the bar with a Blackberry. And I thought, whoa. So, so, so we couldn't know that, that he was using a Blackberry. But then we, we paid out the last 100,000 of our investment, and that was the mistake. So if you really see it's, it's wrong, it's off. They do something totally wrong. Stop the investment. We did that, but here in that case, it really was a mistake to give him more money to finance his messaging, mobile messaging platform while he was using a BlackBerry. So he was not using his own product. Big mistake. Getting emotionally attached to a company, I think, is a big mistake. Uh, especially, you know, you like the founders, they fight really hard, and the company is not working well, and you pour money into the company and, and give them more money and more money. And uh, it's a big mistake. It, 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 you know, these are nice guys, everybody's nice, but if it doesn't work, then, um, then it doesn't work. Um, same way on the other side, getting carried away by success. You know, I think, um, you know, successful investors, successful founders, they can become very, you know, over self-confident because there was one success. And honestly, there's lots of luck in, in, involved in that. And I think it's really a mistake to be overconfident and getting carried away uh, just because there was one, maybe even big success. And the last uh, big mistake is inco in incompatible, incompatible shareholders or investors. We, uh, today should be the closing of a very big financing round. Eight million was all set up. And then yesterday noon, one of the investors said, who contributed one million, I, I don't want it because uh, I'm at the end of my fund and I don't like it anymore. So, um, <coughs> so um, that's something, especially the founders should uh, watch. Even if there's no uh, big selection, um, you should uh, make sure that you know the 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 participants in your company, the shareholders, the investors, uh, should should be compatible to each other. And uh, we had a few mistakes where that was not the case. Am I over my time already? Yes. Well, I have one more slide. Uh, it's important. Actually, I have two more slides, but one more slide. These are some cleantech companies in our portfolio. I think they're really good companies. Heliatech, I mentioned. Nextcraftwerk is here. Intelius is here. Kukul is a smart metering operating system. Inexion is a management solution for energy procurement. Ecointense 
Think is here, Zimplant is here, Resustain is here, and Zubitech is here. So really, really good companies. Uh, just to give you an impression, we're active in that. And then the very last slide, the team. Great team. We have four investment managers who set up their own company. We have four more who worked in startups, so we know um, what we're talking about. Uh, we have uh, guys and girls with technology background and industry background, consulting background, legal background. It's a great team, it's a big team, and that reflects the time that we spend on our portfolio. That's Thank it. Thank you very Thanks. much. Can you just introduce yourself, please? Enforcement. Quick question. Uh, your first slide said you started in 2005 and had a drawdown period of six years. So I put it at the end of 2011. Yes. So two-fold question. How much of your 274 million have you invested? Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen in 2012? We have invested a little bit more than half of, um, of the fund. And the investment period will end this fall. And we are working very hard to set at a follow-on fund. It will be structured very much in the same way. We'll, we're very optimistic we, that we increase the number of industrial companies also investing the, the fund. Um, we actually have four commitments of new investors that will invest in the, uh, along with the old ones in the, in the new fund. And the remaining money of the first fund will be reserved for follow-on financing in the existing portfolio. I've got one question for the room. Who has been financed by a high-tech wonder fund in the room? Please uh, raise your hands. Okay. So who has a project who would like to be financed by high-tech wonder fund? <laughs> <laughs> Raise your hands. Okay. Yeah, so give me some your prospects yeah. here, and that's very good. Give me your um, Any other questions? So we move to. Okay, David. Uh, any, I'm David Arnbush from France. Uh, any difference between your general investment and your clean tech investment? No, there's no. The, the threat threshold that we look at, the, we look at the, at the investment. Will they be, uh, do they have a good chance to be successful? And in the clean tech space, m sometimes it's harder because they need much more money. <coughs> uh, so we ask the question, will we be able to raise 50, 100 million in some cases? But uh, there's no difference. And there's no performance difference. All, all the same so far. 